At this time of Advent, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. We get ready for God to come close by laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all of our mixed motives. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles, whose flames bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. So this is the second. Oh, I got to turn my mic on. I think I forgot to turn my mic on. No, it's on. Never mind. <laughs> this is the second Sunday in Advent, so we will light two of the Advent candles. And it's going fast, isn't it? I thought we just started, and here we are, halfway on our way to Christmas. And although this is the second Sunday of Advent, it's the first Sunday of the month, we do a couple of things. We light our candle for Reed Pan Congregation in South Africa, and we remember all the folks who have birthdays, in this case, in the month of December. And there's quite a list of folks. So today we will pray for Drew Dietert, Brenda Tesh, Thomas Ormont, Robbie Haroldson, Ryder Schindler, Hudson Voigt, Jan Zabel, Dan Dietert, Sarah Sala, Laverne Grunenwald, Terry Harder, Macy Landwehr, Avery A. Strike, Levi Ormont, Luke Sari, Mark Anderson, Marilyn Grunenwald, Lane Haft, John Rocco, Veronica Levake, Pete Soybert, Serena Ugaritz, Andrew Harder, Braxton Borth, Rebecca Velker, Madison Velker, Cherish A. Strike, Jacob Paulson, Barbara Noss, Deb Maley, James Levake, Sue Cooley, Alex Zahn, Jill Coors, Jesse Hine, Luciana Noss, and Tammy Walter. Let's pray for these folks. Oh God, we know that time marches on whether we like it or not. So we pray that you will be with those who begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom, in hope, in health, and in love. Strengthen their trust in the goodness of life and in the knowledge of your never-ending presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So again, thank you very much for joining us on this, the second Sunday in Advent. And we have some worship assistants with us this morning. Accompanying us on the organ is Tammy Landreth. Thank you, Tammy, for being here. Our lector is Sue Harris. And our camera operator is Mike Fleet. So thank you all for being here to help out this morning. We've got a lot of prayer requests, and I have I have 14 prayer requests, and I've, I've lit 15 candles. I'll lit an extra one, just uh, so you can, uh, if you have a special request, you can use it for that. So we'll be continuing to remember a lot of folks here, Pamela LaDuke, Marlene Barr, Brandon Landreth, Lori Prockbow, Carla Schuett, Michael LeVake, Morton Peterson. I haven't checked on Morton, who is the nephew of John and Annie Ormond, so I've got to do that. I'm not sure how he's doing. Patrick Plunkett, uh, Joan Schreiber, who is in hospice care. Charlie Zahn, who had COVID, but is recovering. He's on, a, on an upward trend. Pam Zahn, in hospice care. Richard Stubbe, uh, Dave Spangler, Pam's uh, father, who was hospitalized with COVID, but is home and is making some progress. And then Roger Moots, who is Kim Landwehr's uncle, who's also being hospitalized with COVID and needs our prayers. So we continue our worship this morning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that too often we respond to the siren song of sin. In spite of our best efforts, we go astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. 
By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song is an Advent hymn. We sang it last week. But we're going to sing it again. 239, Hark the Glad Sound. And we'll sing uh, verses 1, 2, and 4 of this hymn. 239, verses 1, 2, and 4. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and she has, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This, we will now read Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, 
and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Sue, and I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, in our Wednesday Bible study, we talked quite a bit about John the Baptist and his relationship with Jesus, and Jesus is a possible disciple of John, but I want to take a bit of a different tact this morning and uh, relate that I just finished reading for the second time, it's a long time ago I read it before, uh, The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin written about 60 years ago, and he was speaking to the need for radical change at that time in the relationships between white people and black people in this country. And the title of the book comes from an old spiritual, a line of which goes, God gave Noah the rainbow sign, no more water, but fire next time. Well, the radical change that James Baldwin professed in this book is still unfortunately necessary today. Yes, between black and white, but between you and all of your neighbors, between you and yourself, between you and your God. And I want to clarify that the fire next time, as as threatening as it may sound, is not a threat of any end times conflagration. Instead, it is again about the necessity of radical change in your life today. Radical change that comes for us as Christians through God revealed in Jesus Christ. In today's gospel lesson, John the Baptist reminds us I have baptized you with water, but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is mentioned a lot, and it's often identified with fire, specifically a cleansing fire. And in the epistle lesson uh, for today from Saint, from 2 Peter, we're reminded of the refining role of that fire, when he writes, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. So again, the Holy Spirit is often identified with cleansing fire. Well, I think we need that. We need the fire next time. We need that cleansing fire of the Holy Spirit, which provides for change. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be a radical change, but change, any change would be good, yet maybe again I'm just being a grumpy old man, but I don't see change in our lives happening as frequently as it should, or to the length that prob probably it should. Despite the fact that as Christians we are surrounded by and reminded of the love of God in Jesus Christ, too often we ignore that love, and therefore, in my opinion, change drags to a halt. The finger pointers are still pointing fingers. The frustrated are still angry and frustrated. The gossipers still gossip, the worriers still worry, the naysayers still naysay, the haters are still afraid. And yes, hate comes from fear. You do not spew vicious epithets against your fellow human beings because you're a tough guy. You hate because you're a frightened little boy. And, and, the hard-hearted and self-absorbed ones, that's, that's you and me, who, despite spending most of their lives looking in the mirror, still do not truly see the person who is staring back at them. And it can be frustrating. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break and invite the kids to come up. So young folks, you come on up. Oh, I have to turn on my mic. You come on up. It's been a long time since we've spent a little time together. So gather around. Oh, I'm trying to get myself down there. Good. Good to see you all come up. Be careful with the candle. Good to see you again. Thank you all for being here this morning. Did you have, did you have a good Thanksgiving? It's probably different than it's ever been before, wasn't it? Maybe you didn't get to travel or go visit the people that you normally go visit. Spend time with the people that you usually spend time with. Maybe that didn't happen. So yeah, maybe it was not what it used to be, but I still hope you had a good day. Well, the reason I wanted to chat with you this morning is I was just talking about change. And I want to reinforce with you young people that any change in our lives begins with you understanding, and you've got to understand this, with you understanding, as I have said so many times, that you are loved, you matter, you are worthwhile, and you are loved. Many, many years ago, actually probably around the same time that that book was there was a guy who was working in the civil rights movement named Jesse Jackson. And he would go out sometimes and visit kids in schools. Maybe where those kids didn't have as many chances as other kids had. And maybe those kids didn't think about themselves as well as they should have been thinking about themselves. And that probably happens to some of you sometimes too. And one of the things he asked them to do was to repeat after him. And I'm going to ask you to do that this morning with me. He would say first, and you would after me, I am, I am, try that again, I am, I am, somebody, somebody. Let's try it again. I am, I am, somebody, somebody. Very good. So you remember that. And you remember, as I said, say to you every Sunday school morning in the past, as there's a lot of folks in this world that love you. Mom and Dad love you. Dad and Grandpa love you. Friends love you. But remember, remember, and let me know as enthusiastically as you can, who really loves you? Jesus loves you. You're absolutely right. Good to see you again. I'm glad you're doing okay. Hang in there. God's with you. Jesus loves you. And you can go back to your seats. Thank you. Get up. Make sure I'm squared away.
Gonna need a drink of water because we're just beginning. Just kidding. So I think that's what the kids need because they need to be reminded, we all need to be reminded that that's where this whole Christian business starts. With knowing that you are loved. But for us this morning, we also need to talk again about radical cleansing change. We need to talk about the fire next time. And please, 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 I'm not talking about some end times conflagration preached by some old TV preacher who probably hasn't come to terms with the man in his mirror. No, I'm talking about a life cleansing fire that gets rid of all the dead wood in your soul to make room for what really matters. I'll tell you this story. I've told it again. I mean, I've told it before. And as I mentioned last week, it's getting to the point where you've heard all of these stories before. But you can pretend like you haven't heard it. But this was, gosh, 1973 probably, and two couples, my, uh, my first wife and I and another couple, were heading to Yellowstone Park to spend a weekend in Yellowstone Park. And I had not met my friend's wife. They had come, they were visiting from out of town and had not met her yet. And uh, I don't know, she started to really get on my nerves because as we drove through the park, her consistent comment was, look at all the dead wood. Look at all the fallen trees. And there was a lot of dead wood. There were a lot of fallen trees because back in those days, if, if a fire should ever start, heaven forbid, Smokey the Bear would be on the spot to put it out. And that's the way our forests were typically managed, and that's the way especially national parks were managed. And she was right. As annoying as she became with all of these constant observations, she was right. There was a lot of dead wood and fallen timber in the forest as we drove through Yellowstone Park. Well, that all ended about 15 years later. In 1988, there was a fire in Yellowstone Park that burned 800,000 acres, almost 40% of the park burned. So today, if you're to visit Yellowstone Park, it's an ashen, desolate, burned out hulk, right? No. It's a vibrant, regenerated biosphere. Fire was needed in order for Yellowstone Park to get what it needed and to regenerate itself. And maybe fire is what we need in our lives to regenerate us as well. We are amid unprecedented times of change and turmoil in our country and in our world. It's been, it's been quite a year. I got a, a, a photo uh, that my little brother sent me. Sometimes I think it's funny for a 70 year old man to be calling his brother a little brother. He's only five years old, younger than he is, but, but he's still my little brother. Anyway, he sent me a picture of his latest Christmas tree ornament, and you may have seen these already, but it's one of those big green garbage dumpsters with the black plastic lids, and there's this big green garbage dumpster, it says 2020 on it, and one of the lids is open and fire is coming out of it. So, indicating that 2020 has been kind of a dumpster fire. And uh, it, uh, in fact, has been. So there has been a lot of change. Yet, when it gets to the place where it really matters, the change that occurs inside, I think, or at least I witness, that too much remains the same. There's still too much anger, too much hatred, worry, and despair. Maybe we need the fire next time. Not some end time conflagration, but a fire to roar through your soul right now and clean out the burden of all that dead wood. And then, and then you will be able to see more clearly. 
your view will be less obstructed and you'll be able to more clearly see that person in the mirror and see who that person really is. And in truly seeing, you can be set free. Set free by the searing love of God in Jesus Christ. God gave Noah the rainbow sign. No more water, but fire next time. Any questions? Amen. Our hymn of the day is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. It's just got two verses and we'll sing both of those verses. Hymn 254, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. No, wait, we already sang that, didn't we? I need to turn my face. Sorry, didn't mean to confuse you. Oh, what have, I, what have we done? I, did I mess everything up? We didn't, 249. Oh, but we already sang that. No, we did 239. Oh, we're going to sing 249. Pardon me, folks. Oh, that's the one that, but, but, well, we never sang, we never sang, come that long expected Jesus, so did we? No, that's the one that we changed. Oh, that's the one that we changed. So we sang that, we sang that. <laughs> Sorry, folks, this is the beauty of live television. So we're going to say 239. 249. Okay. But that's the weird one. No, that's a good one. Okay. I'm Jordan's main. I'm Jordan's main. Oh, you found it. Never mind. Okay. We're going to sing, there's five verses. We're going to sing four verses of On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist cry. And I apologize for all of this confusion. And I didn't have my mic on on top of that. Okay. Here we go. 249. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And this morning we pray, God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need as we respond to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayers. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Bless your church around the world as we specifically name this morning our companion congregation in Reed Pan, South Africa. And bless your church here in this place. As we remember this morning, Rod Troy, Cherish A. Strike, Cindy Creasy, Laverne Grunenwald, Jackson Hyde, Ashley Bungie, Kylie Stubbe, Amber Eno, Brendan Orlant, Nick Teske, Bianca Melander, and Braden Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the earthly scars and the human wounds of natural disasters and restore balance to creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, you demand justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and hope. Lead us toward a world where we understand our responsibility to work diligently toward peace and freedom for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation may be struggling this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. Gather all people in your healing embrace. This morning we pray for hope and healing in the lives of Pamela, Marlene, Brandon, Michael, Morton, Patrick, Lori, Carla, Joan, Charlie, Pam, Richard, Dave, Roger, and all those we now bring to you in the silence of our hearts and minds. God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared their way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We continue our worship with the offering of our gifts and tithes, and uh, I want to continue to thank you for your continuing financial support and support otherwise of the mission of this congregation. If you have a financial contribution, contribution to make, you can mail it in or go onto our website, and up on the top of the banner it says online giving. You can click on that, and it's a pretty easy entree into uh, processing an online gift, either one time or continue. So again, we thank you for those gifts and we pray 
generous God, you have created all that is. You provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. Comfort us with his presence as we gather for this holy meal. And again, if you want to participate at home, you're certainly welcome to do so by gathering bread and by gathering some version of the fruit of the vine, and you can participate in Holy Communion with us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord's Supper is prepared and all are welcome. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us, and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank you very much for being here today, and the magic of, of uh, video recording. We're also, on Sunday, going to have drive-through communion from 9 to 10. So that's, uh, in addition to this virtual service, that's an opportunity for you as well. Coming up this week on Tuesdays again, the sanctuary is open from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening for prayer and meditation. And you can light one of our prayer candles if you wish for a request that you have. On Wednesday, we'll have virtual Bible study, confirmation in person at 6.30, and the next Sunday, another virtual worship service and in-person Sunday school at 9.45. You should have received your newsletters by now. I'm trying to think of what might be in there I need to share. 
a reminder that there is an insert to purchase a virtual poinsettia. And uh, people say, along with those to the council, well, that's a goofy idea, Pastor Dan. Well, here's my thought. My thought was that we have a tradition in this congregation of purchasing poinsettias in honor of or in memory of someone at Christmas time. Well, this is not a normal time. And uh, I think it, it's important at times like this to maintain some sort of tradition, some sort of normalcy, so you can still purchase a poinsettia. You ain't gonna get it. It's gonna be a virtual poinsettia. And the money that you spend for that $15 poinsettia will go to Share Your Holidays, which is a Wausau uh, charitable uh, program with your funds being matched. So it's a good deal. So that's an insert in your newsletter. You can mail that in along with your check made out to St. John if you wish to participate in that. I think that's all. I can't think of anything else right now. So as we go out into another week, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song, which you probably see as a Christmas song, but it's actually an Advent song. Joy to the World, ELW 267. And we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Three verses, one, two, and four of Joy to the World. Mm -hmm. 